Hey guys, sorry it's been a while since I put up a video. I've been, uh, me and Nick have been oh, just working on some crazy stuff together. And I really think the uh, the community is going to like it. Um, and uh, I've also been getting some things done here. We've gotten, uh, we've worked up all of the, uh, the stonework along here. My wife actually did that. I've done the uh, the, the two-level paint job so far going into it. <coughs> Pardon me. But uh, I'm super duper happy. This is only uh, the second layer of, uh, of the set. Um, I don't know how I was unable to uh, <laughs> not figure it out. And actually, I worked uh, I worked on it with with Ian, and he actually walked me through it. And we we finally did figure out the proper uh, way to put it together. The angles really threw me off, um, and that's why I wasn't able to. to uh, I was looking for it to make sense, and the angles don't necessarily make sense, but they do function, and uh, that's the way the set goes together. So that's what we're doing, and um, what I thought I was going to do is uh, do a quick update. There's some things that I'm going to need to add a little bit. Um, there's this section down here. Uh, the longer you go with variably uh, spaced pieces, it's it's impossible to not end up with something out of kilter when everything's out of kilter going together. Uh, so I'm going to take care of that. i got to make a back piece to this to go in. Um, I'm going to have to do something with that back wall. I'm thinking possibly uh, arches going in. Um, but uh, what I thought you guys might want to do is, um, I've done this before uh, with the first set that I did with Ian, and I never did a how-to about it. And so um, I wanted to not only give you some eye candy to look at, but I wanted to explain, um, these are caps for the pillars that still need to be worked up in color. I wanted to explain how I do, let me turn this down, how I paint um, uh, marble because it's kind of a different situation when you're painting marble. Now how do I, how do I how do I explain this to you? I'm going to actually show you the steps. This is two layered right here, and I'm actually going to work this up. This is my base coat. This is called Storm Gray. I, I'm not sure if they still have it around. I've actually got a, a, a small tin of it that I had them uh, color match and make for me. But I want to talk about the difference uh, between opaque stone and non-opaque stone. You're probably wondering what is a non-opaque stone. Um, it's kind of like the difference between a rock and an ice cube. If you are going to paint a rock, um, especially dry brushing, um, and provided this is also that it's of the same color consistency throughout, um, what you would do is you would work up your base layers and go through however many highlights you want to go through to get to your, your highlight layer and then you're done. Now marble is a little bit weird uh, because it has a translucent quality to it and marble is also it's how do I explain it usually has several different colors and it's Working with marble is kind of like doing non-metal metals. Now, anyone who's not familiar with a non-metal metal, um, the way they go about getting that sheen isn't necessarily by use of gloss. They can get away with flat tones, but what they do is they go through transitions from very, very dark to very, very light over very short distances. Okay? That's how they go about doing it as it's been explained to me by painters. I don't claim to be a high-level painter, um, but when a high-level level painter talks, I perk up and listen because, I mean, th those people are, are incredible. They have an incredible talent. Now, switching over to marble, it's um, 
it's usually several different colors of stone that are mixed together that have a translucent quality about it. So what I do is, is it's usually like a smoky blue or smoky gray as the base tone. And I'm talking about your lighter colored marble because there's different colors of marble. So as you can see, I work off of a fairly dark base. And the reason I start with, with this base, I gotta go this deep because um, I need a heavy contrast. Now what I go with is after that I go with a sandstone. My sandstone, but specifically what's important is that normally with a dry brush what you're going to do is you're going to go against your whatever your raised points are. So I would just go against it like that and I would work it, work it down, work it down, work it down, rotate it, work it down, work it down, work it down. You know there's a thousand videos on how to dry brush so I think you're pretty clear on how I would normally attack something like this. However, if you look at it up closely, let's see if I can get, get the light correctly, it's going to look like a messy paint job, and it's specifically done that way. What I use, you're probably familiar with um, stippling. So what I did was I did a very, very heavy stippling on this. I went for, oh, 70 to 90 percent coverage, okay? And so you're getting blotches down in your crevices and things like that. All great big no-nos for dry brushing. However, what this is going to do is it, it's creating a, a heavy contrast between that dark and the next uh, uh, color. Now, what I'm going to be doing with the final layer is I'm going from this color to that color and I'm going to jump all the way up to a titanium white. Now most people would think with a titanium white that I'm just going to dry brush this in a titanium white. However, I'm not going to do that. The reason being is that I need to get like the, the different colors within marble it's funny, the, the forms that they put marble into are like perfect forms, like a perfect column, a perfect flat wall, a perfect whatever. But when you actually look at the stonework itself, it's very kind of haphazard and it kind of creates its own beauty due to that haphazardness. So what I want to do to try and replicate that is I want to, like you do with the non-metal metals, I need to create high to low contrast over very short distances. And the shortest distance that you can get is no distance whatsoever. And what do I mean by that? I mean when I go to stipple this, I'm going to be stippling directly onto it. So it's going to be going into the crevices. It's going to be uh, covering some of the dark. Uh, it's going to be covering a decent proportion of the sandstone and it's going to be uh, creating the depth that you see in the stone. It's like the difference between looking at a rock and looking at uh, into an ice cube which you know I can't really replicate that but what I can try and do is I can try and bring the the haphazard form or in the swirly forms, the different forms within the, the stone's mixture and just try and bring that to bear to the human eye and hopefully the eye will help mix it. And then it, it's already been replicated in this perfect form of this pillar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it really quick on this one to show you the final product. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll demonstrate working up this and working up this and then maybe this will help you out I think there's a lot of different ways that you can approach doing this um, this is just one of many methods um, the light may be a problem here uh, but I haven't done a video in a while it's gonna be a little bit of a long video if you wanna hang out and watch me do this that's great if you don't I totally understand but I wanted to make a mixture of a how-to and an update so that's gonna be my plan 
So you've seen this and how this, this is working. So I'm just going to add in one more final layer of detail. And like I said, many people will see this strictly as messy, and I, I would agree it's messy, but from going out and looking at marble, say in malls, in like your fancy jewelry stores, um, you'll actually see it. You, you, you look into it. It's very strange. If you've been a, if you, you're a welder, and it took another welder to point this out to me, but you can actually see uh, into a weld as you're welding because it actually cuts a little baby trench that it's filling with the welding material. So, um, you know, even even in that sense, you can get you can see that that translucent quality even if it's only for uh, until the metal cools. So, here I'm at my titanium white. I've got the the lightest color I can go with. And again, my base color is quite dark. So just think metals and think messy, because that's how this technique works. I had to go through several different ones. It would have been much easier if you said just uh, work it up in shades of white, because I, I, I mean, dry brushing is like 90% of what I do. So I've, I've got it on here, and I've got about, like I said, 70 to 90% coverage, and it's still marbles mostly white. So I'm going to be shooting for roughly 40 to 50 percent coverage on this. Maybe a little bit less. But what you want to do, and you'll see how I do this in just random sections, and I don't want to hit everything. I don't, like I said, there's a messy quality to this, so I'm trying to create the illusion of marble and this has worked extremely well in in my opinion and so if we have any historical types out there that want to do historical type stuff this is a method that you can come across and personally I think it's spectacular if you look at the quality of it let me get the light um, if you look at the quality of it now Maybe I need to stand it up. Do you see, with the way it stipples, the hairs almost kind of roll around, and there's this feathering effect? If you look at marble, there's a feathering effect between the different uh, mixtures of stone as they, they cooled uh, from their molten state. And it, it usually has a, 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 a heavy level of, of crystals built into it. And that's what gives it that spectacular shine and depth. But as you see, it's, it, you get all the depth, plus you get the mixture, plus you get the feathering. It's really spectacular, um, in my opinion. And the other thing I love about it is because it's so easy. This is something that a beginner can, can uh, all he needs to do is get his ratios right and just stipple it and don't, don't make the rookie mistake of stippling everywhere. You see how this area here has got a lot of yellow in it, but you can go higher up and there's more white. I really have to apologize for the lighting down here. The lighting is absolutely horrible, but it's a it's a wonderful effect. As a matter of fact, I don't even really need to go through it. You've you've seen what I've done. Just when you're going to here, you want to stipple everything, and you're shooting like I said for between 70 and 90 percent coverage. Wherever your detail is going to be, you're going to have more darkness, and that's fine. You actually want that because you're going to have a heavier contrast when you go to your titanium white and it'll really give you spectacular results. It's really a pretty, pretty uh, look to it. I, I, I don't know if this, if this video is really doing justice to it, but it's, it's really wonderful how you can look down into the depths and see some swirls of white in amongst that gray 
um, and then you go all the way up to the tip and you get that nice uh, almost snow like dusting effect on the top so that's how I do my marble and that's how I'm going to be doing the rest of this set um, like I said this is something that I, I devised uh, a year or two ago um, for Ian and it's worked for me and um, it's a lot of fun you should give it a shot and, and see if it works for you uh, particularly you 40k players because uh, there's so much uh, Roman influence in a lot of the architecture so you certainly have the opportunity to really show off this kind of a skill set within uh, those parameters so once again I'm really uh, apologizing because I haven't gotten videos up but um, me and Nick have a huge treat for you guys um, uh, I'm very very impressed with with uh, the skill set that he's bringing to the community and um, I'm uh, in, in it just really comp, uh, complements what I'm doing and it I, I think it's gonna be great so here's what you got guys uh, hope you enjoy it and uh, don't forget to go and check out Nick Whitney um, the channel is Nick Whitney and uh, his company is Modest Magic. Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.